Well, welcome everybody and thank you for taking the time to be with us on our webinar here today. This webinar is brought to you by UC Irvine Division of Continuing Education and today we'll be talking about big data and specifically about uh, the Unifo Unified Big Data Architecture, UDA. Just to give you a little idea how the webinar works, we do have the audio lines on mute. Uh, just to cut down on the background noise. So use the chat area in the upper right hand side of the screen uh, or the Q&A area. We'll be monitoring those uh, for questions uh, during the entire webinar. And again, we really encourage questions. That's how uh, everybody learns. So, so please uh, type your questions in there. My name is Dave Demas and I'm the Director of Engineering and IT Programs here at UC Irvine. Uh, I'm also on the faculty in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. You have my contact information there. The, um, uh, Julie Pay is also on the call. Uh, she's our program representative. If you have any questions uh, about anything regarding where you're going in your life, uh, one of the things that the University of California uh, is mandated to do is to make sure that the workforce in the United States is uh, got the right skills for uh, the employers that are uh, looking for uh, moving their companies forward. So one of the things that we do and that we're mandated to do is make sure that that, that occurs. We, we create courses, we get advisory board members in there, and uh, we help people. We talk to people in various parts of their lives, whether they're returning veterans or people that are out of work or uh, just any number of a variety of situations that people get into, uh, somebody that got just laid off recently, uh, you know, younger kids just right out of school, uh, older people that are vectoring their careers in a different direction. Uh, that, that is one of the things we do for a living. And Julie is very good at uh, you know advising and listening and counseling. We have a lot of different programs, and we only teach programs um, uh, and talk to people about programs that are going to get them a job. And these are short certificate programs that are specifically uh, available for high demand jobs. And again, even if you don't end up taking a class from us, we're, we're here to help. So please contact us with any kind of life questions on how, how some of this stuff might fit in or what you're thinking about your career or do you have the right background, all that kind of stuff, please. Uh, we are here to help. Uh, and, and again, what we're going to do real quickly today is talk about big data and some of the issues related to it and, and then also del delve in a little deeper and our, we're real fortunate to have uh, uh, a great speaker here today that's going to, that's got a lot of experience in this area. To, talk to you a little bit more about the data architecture, uniform data architecture of uh, big data, why it's important. And then we'll talk about it toward the end, uh, a couple uh, educational opportunities and options you have here at the university if you want to go on a little bit more. Uh, we're again very fortunate to have Steve Wilms with us today. He is the CEO of Ceruleum Corporation. Uh, he's authored a tremendous number of uh, data warehouse, uh, 16 uh, to be exact, the data warehouse book, and done a tremendous amount of training, over 15,000 business and IT professionals in a variety of different situations, in a variety of different companies. Uh, he is a Teradata certified master, and he's been teaching with us and, and advising us a lot on these programs. Uh, since uh, 2016, uh, almost two years for us, and it, that has really helped us create, again, content, create these little short free webinars that help guide people in their careers, and Steve, we really appreciate everything you've done for us. Well, Dave, I, I mean, thank you so much for the, for the great introduction, and I, I, and I couldn't be more thrilled to be part of the UCI team. and. Uh, and I, and I really appreciate everyone taking time out of their busy schedules to, to join us here as we're as we go through this little this little webinar here. And one thing I, I didn't mention on on the slide here, but I'll just add to it is that uh, you know Dave and I and Julie we start talking about you know different ways of deploying a big data solution. And and we've been doing this now since about 2009. So we've been operationalizing big data type of implementations now for quite a while. And, and so really, we were just thrilled when, when UCI came to us and said, hey, you know, can you teach, you know, our, our students and people that attend these classes about, 
you know, what does it take and, and what are what are some of the best ways to implement a big data solution? And and let's try to get beyond the hype here and, and really focus on on what really makes a successful implementation. So, you know, we we were thrilled that we could take on, you know, this program and and really kind of talk to people about lessons learned and what we've done and how we've done it successfully and and then share that in the in the form of a of a UDA class. And that's and that's what we're we're really doing is we're taking all the lessons that we've learned over the last seven years and we're we're really sharing every everybody who attends this the attends this UDA class, we're we're sharing those those lessons and, and practices and implementations that we have done in big industries today. So uh we're, we're very happy we can share the experience with all with all the uh, all the, all the people that attend this class. And Steve, uh, you are, you are now the panelist, by the way. So if you use the right above the the, the uh, slide itself, there's a slide that says a four right now. You should be able to advance the slide by clicking on the little right arrow. There you go. You got it. I got it. Perfect. Well, very good. Well, uh, you know, Dave, did you want to add anything else on before uh, before I kind of no, go through? No, it's all you. It's all you. Discussion? You keep going. Okay, very good. Well, you know, you know, so what I said is that, you know, obviously, you know, what we're what we're really focused on in, in the UDA class that we teach, and again, we're we're going to fire this thing up in in summer this this year. Again, we have an eight week accelerated class that we go through, and 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 again, you know, our focus here is is to share with you industry level type of experience. So we've worked a lot around a lot of different industries, telco, retail. Uh, distribution, manufacturing, you know, uh, you know, in this case, also looking at, you know, airline industries, et cetera. And, and a lot of what we try to do is we, we formulated all these experiences that we learned around big data and, and, and really what it comes forward to is to share this information with all the, all the students that participate in the UDA class. So I think the biggest thing, you know, that we tend to talk about in, in the big data world is that, you know, there's a lot of information around, or a lot of interpretation of what big data is, and 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 what it means, and is it really just a platform? Is it a solution? Is it is it is it something more than that? And and really, what what we want to do with this class is is to try to is try to weed through a lot of the misinformation out there and focus on what is what is truly a, a big data solution, and and what what does it take to get it done? So. You know, really, in essence, then when we kind of break into this discussion here, is that the one thing that we're that we see across the industry, and I've talked with a lot of CIOs and CTOs, and, and in fact, I'm on on, on several panels uh, with several Fortune 500 companies, and you know, the the one conclusion that that all these all these XOs have come to come to play is that you know, there's a lot of data out there, and we've been collecting it industry wide. I mean, it doesn't matter what industry you work off of. You know, there's a lot of data. We keep collecting it. And, and at the end of the day, I mean, we're, we're storing electronically. And, and I think the biggest thing that these, that these industry, or in this case, the CXOs are wrestling with is that now that we've learned how to store all this data and we know how to store it really well, the, the question is, what do we do with it? How do we gleam information out of this? How do we get business insight? And, and what we're seeing right now is that clients that we work with today are just, I mean, they're storing decades of data. In fact, I was walking, I was working with a client here just recently, and uh, they told me at this point in time inside their data warehouse, they've got data dating back to 1958. So you're really looking at now 59 years of data, almost six decades of data that they're working with today. In fact, their largest table is is, is three quarters of a trillion rows. And they're like, hey, Steve, we don't want to store this, but what do we do with it now? How do we how do we organize it? How do we how do we glean insight out of this data? And I think that's really what's what we're finding right now is we've kind of hit that point where data is exploding and the demand for data is is ever increasing by by the industry because that's going to be the next gold mine. The gold mine here is is understanding not the fact that we've stored it all, but more importantly, what can we utilize with it? And that's that's what we're seeing right now is we're seeing a, a massive explosion of data that's out there and more and more of it though is becomes it becomes more complicated to work with and, and it's more unstructured. But at the same time though, businesses are recognizing that they need to take advantage of it and they need to use it. So really in essence that's when we talk about, you know, where 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 this all starts from. It all starts from the fact that now we're storing decades of data. Now we gotta figure out what to do with it and that's where we are today. So I think um when we talk about big data, there there's several characteristics with a with a big data solution. And two of these, to be honest with you, if you look kind of at the upper pillar up here, velocity and volume, I mean, we've been wrestling with that for the last 30 years now. I think uh, 
when disk drive technology became cheap and and people started realizing they could store more and more data and and really in essence <laughs> if they run out of data or run out of storage space they just buy bigger systems i mean those parts are they've been around forever and nothing's changed there from that from that standpoint the real the real evolutionary things that have happened over the last let's say 7 to 10 years now is the bottom part of this quadrant which is the the variety and the complexity of the data so what we're finding now is that there, there's more and more types of data that we can use. There's more in that, in that variety of the data is also leading to complexity because it's, it's now what we call, a lot of people call it, you know, they call it unstructured data. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if that really makes a lot of sense there. It's, we, we tend to refer to it as more multi-structured because really at the end of the day, all data has some sort of structure to it. But yes, it's very complex. It is, it is very hard to work with. It's very hard to extract out the true hidden gems out of there. And, and at the same time, the variety of that data, albeit like sensor data, um, if we're looking at like, let's say planes out there, all the different sensors that are on a plane, look at manufacturing plants, you look at website data. Yeah, it's a lot of variety, a lot of complexity. And, and the key then is trying to figure out how can we grab this data and then intermix it with what we currently do today and find that center point of, of being able to drive the value. And I think that's the, that's the real key here uh, around big data is that it takes all forms. It takes stuff that we currently have today, the structured data that's in our databases and data warehouses, and then you have to intermix it with the other forms of data that we're sourcing now that's going to drive the real business data value. And that's exactly what we're focused on when we talk about the class that we're teaching here in, in the summer semester. So really, in essence, then, you know, part of this then, too, is that, you know, now that we've recognized the data that we're looking at and the data that we need, um, it's, it's funny now that the, the business now is, is looking at ways of, of taking advantage of that data, but the, at the old adage, though, you see that business wants it now. They want it now. They want it. They wanted it yesterday. And if they don't have it, then they can't make good business decisions. So what we're finding here is that not only is the business discovering, you know, new data and new ways of, of, of analyzing that data, but the other part of it, though, is they want it as soon as possible. So there, there's an old adage, and I think a lot of people probably have heard about this concept called data where it lies. And, and really, in essence, I mean, that, that's the only way where you can, you can analyze data, you know, at the fastest part of it or near real time is by leveraging it where it lies, taking what you need, analyzing that data, and then sharing it with the rest of your community or, or the rest of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the associates at the company. So what we're finding now is that, you know, as companies are beginning to, to understand what kind of data they can leverage, the question is how fast can we get it, how fast can we integrate it, and then more importantly, though, can we leverage it where it lies? And I think that's the biggest thing because now you're talking about, you know, data that's everywhere inside your inside your enterprise, and then and then be able to leverage it in such a way where we can take it and analyze it very quickly and then share it with the masses. And I think that's where the real problem is right now is, is that, okay, so now we've identified it. Where do we put it? Where do we analyze it? More importantly, though, you know, what are the technologies that are available to take, to take advantage of the data that's currently out there today? So I think um, where that comes into play then is that, you know, not only – are, are you looking at, at new forms of data, multi-structured data, but the real key here, though, is, is, is interacting with the current data stores that you have today. And, and really, in essence, I mean, there's, like I said before, there's a lot of, a lot of misinformation out there about, about you know, hey, a, a big data solution is just Hadoop or it's just leveraging Python or Scala or, or whatever, but to be honest with you, a big data solution involves everything in your in your enterprise today, to be honest with you. So it takes it takes the, the multi-structured data that we're analyzing today. It takes the structured data that we currently have in our data warehouse today. And then it's then binding those data sets together that really drives the, the true business insight. You know, so for example, I've got a I've got a client that I work with, a manufacturing client, and it's and it's an interesting study where they, they've got all this sensor data, and they're, they're, manu they're actually a metal manufacturing client, and uh, they, they've got all this sensor data on their manufacturing line. So they, they track voltages, and they track, you know, um, when, when components fail, they track, you know, how fast, they, how fast the manufacturing line is moving. It tracks the cutting. It tracks the heat. It tracks just about everything. 
And, and it's interesting because they have another manufacturing line. So if you think of it, they've got a, a main line and now they've got another line. And that other line, the backup line, is simply there for backup. And so therefore, what they're anticipating, if they break down, they can cut over to the other to, to the other manufacturing line. But if you really think about that for a second, that is really wasting a, amount, a, a massive amount of money on that secondary line that's not being utilized. So the, the whole goal here was, is that could we leverage, you know, a big data platform to analyze that sensor data, be able to predict when a problem was going to occur and proactively address the problem before they have to switch over to the backup line. And the whole premise was that, is that if we could figure that out where we could actually preempt a problem, then they could actually theoretically fire up that secondary manufacturing line so they could produce more up, they can produce more out, you know, output in their manufacturing for their, for their sheet metal and then drive revenues and drive profit. So really in essence, when you think about that, that takes a little bit of everything. It takes the data that's in the manufacturing line. It takes the data about the, about the actual line itself as far as the models and, and, the, and the components they're using and everything else, and then intermixing that together to drive the solution that we're looking for, which is doing a predictive model to analyze when and also be more importantly, be proactively measure when a problem has occurred and fix it before it actually happens. And, and that just gives you an idea that it takes all forms of data to get that done. And that's exactly what we talk about when we look at a big data solution. It's not just one solution. It isn't just a Hortonworks or a Cloudera or a Python or, or whatever or Spark. It takes all forms of data to make a big data solution actually happen. And that's exactly what this, this UDA class goes through is understanding then what it takes to get that done. And as I said before, in order to, uh, to analyze that multi-structure data, so if we're looking at like click screen data or mobile data or web data or sensor data or manufacturing data or whatever, it takes tools to get that done. And then obviously part of, the, part of this class that we go through for the UDA class is to understand what map reduces, but more importantly though, understand what, what SQL map reduces. And, and that's really in essence where we, we spend a lot of our time in this class is, is, is in essence though teaching people how to use, take advantage of SQL map reduce. So what I mean by that then is that um, there's a whole host of functions that when you talk about map reduce in its, in its vanilla form, it's a Java based technology. It requires you to have Java skills. It requires you to have the, it requires you to have programming knowledge. Well, there's another type of uh, there's another type of map reduce out there. It's called SQL map reduce. And what this does is it's it's still using the Java based programs, but there's now a layer on top of that where where you can now invoke those functions with SQL commands. So what this does now is that it actually empowers the business to take advantage of these new type of ways to analyze data, to be able to look at patterns in the data, to be able to see how people interact with us from a standpoint of, let's say, Facebook or Twitter or whatnot, where we want to see how people are responding to maybe our services, our new, our new, our new models or new devices that we're putting out there, the stuff that we're selling, et cetera. And, and we can do it in a, in a very expedient manner. But more importantly, though, it empowers the business. And that's the key here. And, what, and, and part of this class that we go through is, is talking that, that when we talk about big data analytics, we talk about analyzing multi-structure and structured data. The way this is formulated now is that we can now empower the business user. So it's just not a data scientist solution. It's actually a, it's actually a skill set that could be taught to a business user and the business user can analyze the data on their own and then make the appropriate decisions to better the customer relationship with your clients, et cetera. So part of what we do here is not only just talk about you know, the types of, of, of data sources and what you can work with, but more importantly, empower the business people to take advantage of the tools that are out there and the capabilities that are out there to do your own predictive or behavioral analytics as opposed to relying on, on an IT source or whatnot to get that done. So in essence, though, this class does focus on that as well. So really, in essence, then, as I said before, is that you know, when we talk about big data, obviously there, there's a lot of different vendors out there that do or, or provide a big data solution. And, and really what, what we're trying to drive at here is that it's more than, you know, a big data solution is more than just 
you know, standing up a, a Hortonworks box or standing up Cloudera or or looking at, you know, Green Plum data or whatnot, or or at the same time then looking at open source versus enterprise level solutions. To be honest with you, a big data solution involves your entire enterprise. So when when we talk about an enterprise solution when it when it works around big data, it takes, yes, it takes a Hadoop solution. It takes a data warehouse. It takes a, a, a method or a discovery platform to take advantage of, of structured and multi-structured data and empower the business user. So when we talk about a big data solution, it's more than just a, a, a Hadoop solution. It really takes everything. And, and, and really, in essence, then, when we talk about that, this is where we talk about the, the unified data architecture. And, and what I mean by this, then, is that big data is more than just MapReduce. It's more than just Hadoop. It requires lots of systems. It requires lots of different types of data. It requires different types of source systems to, to integrate it all together. And, and really, in essence, then, when we talk about the unified data architecture, you know, we can talk about this in its more vanilla form. Is it really is essence where you're, you're looking at your whole entire enterprise, it's leveraging data across all your platforms, and then at that point, then allowing you to, to, to bridge the gap of pulling together data from your data warehouse, pulling data from your source systems, pulling data from your data lake or Hadoop, integrating all that data together, analyzing it from a holistic approach, and then really coming forward with a full customer journey, albeit unified approach, a 360-degree view of your customers, which really then drives the business insight. And that's when we talk about a true big data solution is, is leveraging everything in your enterprise and, and looking at your data in, in more than just one way or the other, it's taking advantage of everything. And that, and that is, in essence, when we talk about the unified data architecture, is it's really getting the more of the mindset of, of looking across your entire enterprise, looking at all your different types of data and going from there. You know, for example, I mean, you know, to really get a true holistic approach on, on your customers, you know, I, I work with a client right now where, We've now integrated website data, we've integrated store data, we've integrated call center data, and we've inter integrated data from, from their customer data warehouse. And what we're looking at now is more of a, of a customer journey approach where we're saying, okay, well, if we're trying to solve a business problem, like let's say that we're trying to figure out when a customer might leave us or stop being a customer of ours, well, in order to figure out exactly what that behavior is where a client leaves a, per, a certain company, we gotta look at everything. We gotta look at, okay, did they go to the website? Did they call the call center? What was the conversation like? What were there, were there any kind of key words that we need to hone in? Did they go to the store? Did they ask questions about their, about their plan or, or about their contract or whatnot? And then at that point, then we can start to build a picture or a pattern of, of what happens when a customer stops being a client. And then once we figure that out, we can now go backwards in time, figure out what those patterns are, and then preempt the pattern before it actually occurs. So therefore, if you're trying to figure out a fraudulent activity where a client, we want to figure out what causes a fraudulent activity, well, it takes more than just understand, oh, that person, that person created fraud. It takes more about, well, what did, what did that person do? What was the behavior? What was the pattern that, that, that mostly occurs that causes that fraudulent activity. And then once you figure that out, then you can preempt it before it actually occurs with email programs, direct contact with a client, outbound call center activities, you know, whatever it takes to, to interact with that person and preempt the actual occurrence of a activity like fraud or whatnot. And that's when we talk about that whole holistic customer journey approach. And it takes all forms of data to get that done. So part of this then is when we talk about the unified data architecture, and again, I mean, you know, this could be any kind of data solution, any kind of database solution, but what we're going to hone in is, is a solution that's provided by Teradata. And to be honest with you, you know, we've looked across the industry, we've looked at all the different types of big data solutions out there, and, and really, to be honest with you, the Teradata really has the best story out there, but to be honest with you, you can, you can, inter, you can interchange Teradata, you can interchange the different types of Hadoop environments, but really, in essence, the, the driving factor here, though, is it takes multiple environments to truly drive a big data solution. So it takes 
a data warehouse. It takes a discovery platform. It takes a data lake or, or a Hadoop platform. And again, interchange whatever database you want here, but it takes multiple platforms to drive a true, or in this case, to drive true business analy analytics or true business insight, true predictive analytics, behavioral analytics, or whatever you want to do there. It takes more than just one, one platform to get that done. And then really, in essence, then for our class, the good news here for all the folks that attend our, our UDA class, um, you know, it's not just a lecture type of class out here. We actually allow you guys to interact with, with our environment that we have here at Ceruleum. So you actually get the, the, the opportunity to interact with a Hadoop system, to interact with a discovery platform, to do analytics on, on the data that we're, that we're providing for, for the class and all. So really what it does is it teaches you how to be a data analyst, and it also teaches you how, you know, some of the thought processes that go through if you're a data scientist. It also goes through the whole the whole iterization process. So when you talk about a big data solution, there's a, there's a lot of noise in the data. Because when you talk about sensor data or web analytics data, you know there's a lot of noise and there's a lot of false fail readings. And and so really in essence, you got to find ways to to weed through that noise. And that's what we call it the iterative process. Because you know it isn't the diamond in the in, in the rough where if you analyze something, you come up with a result. Oh, that's the solution. That's the business insight. Well. It really, it really doesn't happen that way. I mean, and so a lot of the, uh, a lot of the things that we do in our class is that we talk about the fact that you've got to find ways to weed through that noise. You've got to, you've got to put on it uh, on a data analyst, data scientist type of uh, mindset, where sometimes it takes multiple iterations to weed through that data, to filter out the noise, and and find the true golden path of what actually causes whatever business problem that you're analyzing. So. The good news with the UDA class is that we allow you to get hands-on. We allow you to interact with a with an environment, a UDA environment. Allows you to interact with data in Hadoop. Allows you to leverage a discovery platform. It allows you to take advantage of some of the functions that are out there, and it allows you to analyze data sets and come up with your own conclusions based on the business problem that we're looking to solve here. So the good news is that not only do you understand kind of the, the elements that make up a, a, a real business data solution, but at the same time, though, it also enables you to, to take advantage of it by doing some real hands-on type of stuff and then going through, again, that iterative process of, 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 of taking a business problem taking the data from multiple different sources, in this case, again, data where it lies, analyzing that data, taking advantage of some of the MR functions that are available in a discovery platform, visualizing that data and looking at that path. But at the same time, then a lot of times what you're gonna find is that it may not be the true golden path to that data. We're gonna have to take it through again, iterate that data one more time, and then weed out that noise, and then really come up with that true golden path which then ultimately you share it with the masses by getting it into a repository that can allow concurrency and allow, allow business insight tools to take advantage of the data set that we get from the big, big data discovery process. So in essence, what we go through in, our, in the UDA class is exactly this process where we take a problem, we, we integrate data from multiple sources, we analyze that data, we visualize that data, and then we work through that process again until we actually find the true golden path before we share it with the masses, ultimately getting it out to a data warehouse that can then be shared amongst lots of users based on the results that we find. So in essence, when we go through the UDA class, we're gonna, we're gonna work through this process hands-on, give you a chance to, to do your own al an analytics here, and come up with your own conclusions. And, and at that point, then that will then give you sort, sort of an idea that of what it takes to truly deploy a big data solution in your own customer environments uh, from this class. So uh, Dave, I, I think that's where I conclude, and I think I'd lead it, actually I got one more thing here for you all, um, and then I'll turn it over to Dave and Julie, is that, you know, to be honest with you, when we talk about, you know, what, what this class focuses on and, and what positions we see out here is that, you know, a lot of a lot of what we teach in this class is focused on these real two top these two top bullets up here, which is really teaching you how to be a data analyst, and at the same time taking advantage of tools and skill sets that make you a data scientist as well. And to be honest with you, if you're looking across the industry today, and, and in fact, you can go out to Forbes and and look at the hottest market, the hottest jobs in the market today. So if you guys are looking for a skill set that's going to be 
that's going to be longevity throughout throughout the next decade or so. To be honest with you, it's data scientists and data analysts. Those are the two biggest, hottest areas in our market today, um, in, in our industry today, and that's where we have our biggest gap um, in our environment today, especially across industry. This is not just telco or manufacturing or retail. It's across all the platforms, and both the data analysts and the data scientists jobs are growing at a 60 to 70% clip a year. So really, in essence, if you're looking for a good skill set, those are the areas that you want to focus on. And then really, in essence, then, the other parts of these then are, are taught through all this class as far as, as far as some of these other pieces and parts. But if you're really looking at the hottest markets today, it's those areas right there. And to be honest with you, you know, those people or, or those, those people that have a skill set where they can not only look at the data, but interpret the data and then communicate that to the business. So therefore you can make better decisions about the data that you're analyzing. Those are the hottest markets that we see out there today. And, and those are the hottest jobs. And, and really in essence, and like I said before, we're, we're thrilled that we can show you kind of a piece and part of what this is. And then more importantly though, share it with you all as far as as you're developing your own skill sets as you go out to the work, work, work today. And really then what that comes down to then is like I said before, is those people who can analyze and understand data, um, that's where all the action is today, and that's where the hottest markets are today for the job, for job career, job growth at this point. All right, so Steve, that was wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the things we want to do is uh, answer a few questions, and, I, and several of them have, uh, have queued up. So, Steve, if you wouldn't mind staying with us just for a second. We do have a couple <laughs> courses out here, uh, as you might suspect that Steve was talking about, uh, that can help you. Uh, this is part of a, a certificate. Again, our certificates are shorter, uh, you know, four or five sequence, or four or five course long sequences that get you, again, very practical skills. Uh, this one is the big data specialization, and there are two required courses. Uh, and again, we'll go right here. There you go. You can go up on our website if you're interested in this at all. Uh, the required courses you see up at the beginning are Introduction to Big Data, and then this class we're talking about here is the Uniform uh, Big Data Architecture. But you can also see uh, in the electives uh, other courses that uh, and on topics that Steve had mentioned, like Hadoop and, and specific Teradata stuff. And then to some general ones like Big Data and Big Data Tools, and then just things that are more general. Uh, depending on where you are, like Introduction to Data Science, which is right down here. Um, let me get my little pointer there. There he is. Uh, so Introduction to Data Science. I blocked the wrong one there. There it is. Uh, and these are very good places to start if you, uh, if you haven't had any background. And that uh, brings us to one of the questions. Oops, let me go back. Sorry. Sorry, guys. There he is. One more. Uh, the questions that came up is, you know, uh, is there any type of financial aid? And if you do end up taking a course here, now these courses are, are much cheaper and you're not signing up for a, a master's degree or anything here. Uh, you're, you're signing up to take a single class at a time and you don't have to sign up for the whole certificate, which was another question. Uh, you just take what you need. Some people get the whole certificate. Some people just take a class or two that they really need for their job. Other people are trying to get into the industry from related industries or in some cases from completely unrelated industries uh, or backgrounds. And, and in both of those situations, um, you know, we, we're, we're very adept at uh, helping people through that transition. But uh, if you are looking for financial aid, if you need financial aid, there's a bunch of different ways you can get it. Uh, there's AmeriCorps, which is uh, especially for people right out of school. Uh, they'll give you some money if you give them some time. It's a great way to meet people and uh, network yourself into, into good jobs and connections. There's certainly a lot of loan programs. If you are currently employed, these are University of California credit classes, so most employers will pay for, pay for things. And then if you are uh, out of work, uh, there's also the Workforce Investment Act, WIA, and I think we have it there. No, maybe we don't. But uh, there are a lot of other uh, sources of in, in, income that, uh, or uh, sources of loans and uh, people that will pay for it. So if you are out of work, you want to go to wherever you're getting your un unemployment check here in California. It's called a one-stop center. Uh, but wherever you are and if you are in that situation, please go to those uh, places. Don't just collect your, your check. 
Uh, there's a lot of good resources there, but they can get you qualified for money, free money that you don't have to pay back uh, for these kinds of short programs that get your, your skills really high. So keep those things in mind. Uh, and again, if you've got any questions about that, uh, let us know. If you do want to start something with us, we are on the, uh, the University of California uh, quarter system. Uh, so we have four quarters in a year. They're 10 weeks long. Our next quarter starts in summer, uh, which for us uh, is around the July time frame for this class. Uh, the specific class starts on July 10th, and you can go over at our website or call us if you have any other information about this. Now, a couple other questions that came up, and please uh, keep the questions coming in. They're very uh, valuable to us. Uh, one of the questions was, well, I don't know if I have the right background uh, to jump into these classes. Uh, I have some, um, you know, I took a, a coding class when I was a freshman, but that was that was it, or, or maybe even in high school you took a coding class uh, in those sort of situations, but maybe you came out with a marketing or business degree. Uh, and we find that, you know, as long as you have a little bit of pension, you know, there, there's some coding and there's a little bit of uh, understanding in most of these uh, Jobs, there's some, uh, you know, Excel and maybe some Tableau and some statistical analysis uh, that that will teach you, but uh, you can't be scared of it. You know, if if you're if you really have an aversion to any kind of math or, or coding at all, then it's probably not a, a good place to go. But uh, you do not have to be a computer scientist to be effective at this. In many cases, uh, we will see people that are domain experts. You know, they understand a particular market. And that, in, in many cases, can be more valuable than understanding the technology. We, you know, we can teach the technology, but it's hard to teach uh, the gut feel of the market and the market dynamics of, of any particular company. And, and when we find uh, people, and those can be marketing people or even salespeople within an organization or people within uh, business intelligence uh, operations within an organization uh, themselves, uh, we take a, we get a wide range of people. And again, from, from marketing to 100% to technical people, uh, we, we bring them all into these uh, courses and are able to move them forward in a way that gets them things on their resumes that can help them in the future get jobs. And again, it can apply to people that, that have, have not done anything in this area at all. Now, what you want to do is call, call myself or Julie and uh, chat a little bit more about you know, what your specific background is like. Uh, but, you know, it, it really does work, uh, especially for people that are in, in kind of more general business roles or marketing. Uh, one other question, and, and Steve, jump in here at any point here. Any, any thoughts on... Uh, you know, what you see with the kind of people that you've taught in the past, what their backgrounds are? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. In fact, that was really interesting. The, uh, the last class uh, that I taught here, uh, which was in the winter semester, um, is that we had basically business people. And, and really, to be, I don't, to be honest with you, Dave, I think that's where more and more of this market is going towards is, is people who have a business acumen that, that want to analyze data, they want to empower themselves, and, and really, I, I see more and more people who are who are more business level focused than than looking more towards the IT level, and and I think that's kind of where we're seeing a lot of the trends going today is that uh, more and more what what's happening is the business is taking over, and uh, they're they're empowering themselves, they're learning tools, they're they're learning how to do the analytics on their own, and then more importantly though they're they're taking they're taking control of the uh, of the data, and so really, I mean, if you have a business acumen and and you like data, like analyzing data, uh, trying to understand what the data is trying to tell you, then I'd say you know, learning big data from that perspective is 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 top notch for those folks. Yeah, and absolutely, and actually, you know, it's kind of fun. It, it's it's a very interesting way to uh, dig in. It's a little bit of a mystery you're you're making, but. But tr truly, it is it is a, a fun dynamic. That's why people are pulled pulled towards it, especially those people that that can ask those kind of questions. Uh, but but it's it's terribly engaging. It's it's so much good information out there, and you're digging around for little pieces of gold nuggets that might uh, distinguish you from the competition. And um, 
you know, that's that's where the world's going to be for the next 20, 30 years. Now, the other question that came up uh, is, is how do I get in if it's to jobs in these places? Well, there's certainly a lot of jobs, but but in many cases it is a little hard. Having a course or even a small certificate uh, like, like some of ours certainly helps, but you also need to do the thing that everybody always tells you to do, which is networking. You know, 75%, 80% of the jobs people get, they get because they know somebody, especially if they're changing careers or they're moving, um, you know, from a, a you know, really different tack in, the, in their career. Uh, so one of the things we highly recommend is is get to industry events. And, and there's a lot of different uh, industry societies in these areas. Uh, there's some large ones. There's Predictive Analytics World, PAW. Uh, that's a fairly large one that's uh, pretty valuable. There's um, some local uh, uh, chapters of, of many different societies. Search, search some on Google. You'll, you'll find a couple depending on where you live. Most of them have some kind of a monthly meeting, and, and we highly suggest that you get to these things live. Now, the, doing a lot of networking via social media is fine, but it works a lot better if you've met the person. And again, you don't have to have uh, have known the person for two or three years to have them help you uh, in your in your network get a job. If you go to an interesting society meeting, or maybe a couple of them, and just make a point of of saying uh, tonight I'm going to give myself a goal of meeting ten new people or five or however big the meeting is, and, and you do that, you walk up to them and you introduce yourself and. One of the things I suggest that works really well is you kind of interview them. You know, you're 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 asking them, well, how did you get to where you are, and, and what were your 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 motivators, and and what did your career path look like to get to where you are, and, and they'll talk. They love people love to talk about their stuff, and it will give you valuable information to help you you know map out your own path, and it will get you connected with that person, even if it's only a 10 or 15 minute conversation. Uh, it'll get you connected, and that person will remember you. So at the end, you say, hey, can I link up with you on LinkedIn? You link up with them on LinkedIn, and you do a lot of that. And then eventually you get 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 people that are in this new industry that you want to go to that you've physically met. And, and again, those people then can be very valuable to you because then you can look at their their friends and, and their connections themselves and see companies that – that you might want to work for, that your, your guy that you met uh, has a connection there or actually works at that company. And then you make another phone call to the person. Say, hey, remember me? I, we talked at the uh, PAW conference last June. Um, I'm looking at this job. It's at the company your friend works for or it's a company that you work for. Can you tell me something about the job? Again, you're not asking specifically for the job, but you're just asking for some insights and information. So the person then... Most likely, in all cases, he's going to go down to the hiring manager and say, hey, I met this person. You ought, to, you ought to look at him. He's a good guy. That's what you want to do to try to network yourself into any any different industry. All right. Well, just one last reminder here. The other question that came up is, you know, as it came in late to the webinar, I didn't get the stuff at the beginning. Uh, the webinar is recorded, so everybody that, saw, that gave us an email, we will send you back a link to the recording. It will also be posted up onto our website at the University of California, Irvine. Uh, under Division of Continuing Education, you will find uh, that click. And all of you that are on the webinar will certainly get a direct link. And again, one last thing, if there's any questions, please give us a call. Again, even if you don't take a class from us, one of our jobs is to just help make sure people get into the right profession. We've been doing it a lot in this area for a long time. We have. 10 different programs, related programs in this area, probably got one of the deepest uh, groups, groupings of programs of any, any university in the U.S. in this area. So it's a strong place. We've had a lot of experience, and we'd be glad to share that with you. And with that, I just like want, want to say thank you very much, especially to Steve for putting this together, and Steve, again, for everything that you do for us, not only creating great current classes uh, in your in your limited amount of spare time, but uh, for advising us uh, and for coming on and putting together these webinars. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. And again, one last time to everybody else, thank you for taking time. I know a lot of you, it was probably around your lunch hour, and that's uh, 
that's a little tough. So thanks again, everybody. Have a great afternoon. Thanks again, Steve. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Have a good week.